Today we're going to talk about parallel and perpendicular lines. Okay. What kind of lines are parallel lines? Who could tell me? How about Yechan? Lines that do not intersect. Yeah, lines that do not intersect in where? In the same plane. Correct. You got to include that in there. Because they could be skewed, right? If yeah. you say, okay, what about perpendicular lines? What kind of lines are perpendicular lines? How about Amen? Yeah, not lines that intersect in 90 degrees. Not any angle, but 90 degrees, right? So, what do we know about then? Let's first talk about parallel lines. What do you know about the slope of the parallel lines? If you remember from maybe last year or something, from previous classes. Grace, do you remember anything about parallel lines? Same what? They have the same slope, is correct. So here's, this is our first theorem. Write this down. It says, two non-vertical lines are parallel if and only if their slopes are equal. Okay, so as you write this down, think about why do you think they mention non-vertical lines? Why don't they just say, two lines are parallel if and only if their slopes are equal? Why can't they just say that? Why, did they, why do you think they have to include non-vertical part there? Okay, so as you write down, uh, write this down, think about it, I'll wait, okay? So, why do you think they have that part, non-vertical uh, lines? Why can't they just say two lines? Uh, how about, Brianna, what did your group come up with? Because it has no slope vertical Yeah, vertical lines have no slope, so you can't really say that they have the same slope. Even though, two vertical lines, are they parallel? Yes, yes, yes. they are, but you can't really say they have the same slope, right? Because yeah. they have undefined number, you can't really compare those, because they're undefined numbers. Um, so, by the way, when we say two lines, we mean two different lines. You guys remember way back when we say two, right? Triangles, we mean two different triangles. Same exactly. thing applies here, right? Because uh, that's what they mean, right? <laughs> two, different tri uh, two different lines, right? They're going to be uh, parallel. All right, so take a look at this now. All right, so do you guys remember this from last time, this website? Okay, this is really cool, okay? So now, let's graph a line. Uh, equation of a line in slope intercept form is equal to, y is equal to what? mx plus b, I'm gonna put three x plus two. So as you can see, my, what does that three, what does three tell you? That's your slope, m, right? My m stands for, and what does that two tell you? Y intercept, very good. Somebody then give me an equation of a line that is parallel to this line. Now that we know something about slope of the two lines that are parallel to each other, Somebody give me an equation of a line that is parallel to this line y equals 2, 3x plus 2. How about Nicholas? What do you think? Y equals 3x plus 3. Sure. Y equals 2, 3x plus 3, you said? Yeah, there, there's kind of, let me change mine to then negative 2, so they're, they're not so close to each other. Is that okay? All right, so there you go. And as you can see, look, just both of these lines, they have the same slope, right? And so they're parallel. Uh, and the one thing I, I like this, one thing, about this that I like is you could change the slope into m, right, to some variable, and then you could change it, right, change the value. Right now, look, m is 1. Look what happens as I change the value of m. They remain what? Parallel, Parallel because they both have the same slope of? 3. three. M. 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 M, M, M. And then now I'm changing the value of m, <laughs> right? M is my variable now. I could go over to 10. It's going to be really steep, right? All right, what happens if I make it to 0? Oops. Yeah, you get a. I mean, you get both of the line to be horizontal, right? Does that make sense? So as you can see, when they have the same slope, they are parallel. Isn't that nice? Okay, it's kind of nice to see that illustration. All right, let's look at then the next theorem. Next theorem is something about perpendicular lines. Okay, so write this down. If oh, it doesn't say if two non-vertical lines are perpendicular, if and only if the product of their slope is what? Anybody remember from negative one? Very good. <laughs> from last year. That's what we learned. Okay. So write that down. And again, they say non-vertical lines because which line is vertical line perpendicular to? Horizontal, horizontal line, right? But we can't really multiply the slopes of a vertical line and a horizontal line, can we? Because what's the slope of a vertical line? Undefined. undefined. What's the slope of a horizontal line? Zero. Zero. So when you zero. multiply undefined times zero, do you get negative one? No, you get zero. No, you, do you get zero? Yeah. You can't multiply. Yeah, any number times zero is zero except when you multiply by undefined number, you can't. So yeah, you can't really, it doesn't have any value. So that's why it doesn't work for horizontal and vertical line, but it works for everything else, does it? doesn't it, right? When you multiply the slope of two non-vertical lines that are perpendicular, you get negative one. But is horizontal line and a vertical line, are they perpendicular? Yeah. Yeah, so that's the one exception. Does that make sense? So that's why they included non-vertical lines. All right, so write that down. I'll wait. 
So uh, when you multiply, let's say slope m sub 1 is the slope of the line 1 and m sub 2 is the slope of line 2. If they're perpendicular, this should equal to what? Negative, Negative one. 1. So can I solve for one of them? Yeah. Okay, if I solve for one of them, what do I get? Like if I solve for m sub 1, what does m sub 1 equal to then? <laughs> Yeah, so negative 1 over m, m sub 2. Does that make sense? That's how you get negative 1 when you multiply together, correct? So that's kind of nice to know. Okay, write that down. So let's go back to our uh, graphing calculator. And let's think about that. I want to make line 1 perpendicular to line 2. And the slope of line 1 is m. So what do I need to do for line 2? so that they're always going to be perpendicular. I want you to discuss with your group. What do I need to do to line two so that they're perpendicular all the time? Go ahead, everybody think about it. All right, so who could tell me what to do? How about, uh, no one came up with the right idea? I did. Okay, uh, how about, Amy, what do you think? What did your group come up with? Uh-huh. Yeah, so if, if the slope of a line 1 is m, Amy, right? What do I need to change the slope of line 2 so that th when you multiply, you get negative 1? Don't we need the slope of the second line to have the slope so that when you multiply them together, you get negative 1? So m times what gives you 1? m times what gives you 1? 1 over m. So you need, what do you need? If m times... 1 over n gives you 1, I need it to equal to negative 1, right? So that they're perpendicular. So what do I need to change that to? Negative what? Negative 1 over m is correct, guys. So that's what we need. Let's see. Well, negative 1 over m. And what do you get when you multiply m times negative 1 over m? It's always going to be negative 1, right? And they're going to be perpendicular. Look, I can even change the value of m, and they're going to remain perpendicular. Because you have heard this before, opposite reciprocal, right? Right. Just a reciprocal of a number would give you one, but you need an opposite of reciprocal so that when you multiply together, you get negative one, right? Yeah. What would happen if I change the slope to uh, zero? What What happened to the other line? They're the same. No, they're not in the same thing. The other one is gone because what happens if you have? That's right. When you get one over zero, it's an undefined number. It doesn't know what to do, so it's just doesn't do anything. So, so before the other one it does. Okay. There you go. You see how they remain perpendicular? 90? Right? Does that make sense? So that's what this term is about. Any question there? You see? You have m sub 1 times m sub 2 gives you negative 1, right? So if you solve for one of the other, one of the uh, m sub 1, the other slope has to be negative 1 over m sub 2. Okay. Does this make sense? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, Less than, move on to the other uh, one here. Some examples. All right, so take a look at this example. We have two points. It says given points S5, comma, negative 1, and T, negative 3, comma, 3, find the slope of every line that's parallel to ST, and find the slope of every line that is perpendicular to line ST. Go ahead, everybody try. I'll wait for you. You could help each other out? Go ahead, I'll wait. How do we do this, guys? All right, who could help me how to do this? What is my first step? Because if you know how to do the first step, rest is easy. What do I need to do here? How about, who have I call? How about uh, Jonathan? What do you think? What, what do we need to do here? Find the slope of line ST. And how do we do this, Jonathan? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, so you do the uh, slope, you know, use the formula for slope, right? And once you know the slope of this line, st, which is negative 1 over 2, you should all know the slope of every line that is parallel to this. What is it, class? Negative 1 over 2. is the same as the line, right? From the theorem above, right? Then what about the slope of the other line, that, all the lines that are, every line that are perpendicular to st? How about Dylan? What'd you get? 2 is correct, because well, what's half times 2, guys? I mean, negative half times 2 is? Two. Negative 1. You see how you can verify. Does that make sense? The answer is 2. Don't you need 2? Right? Negative 1 over 2 times what gives you negative 1? It's 2. Opposite reciprocal. What's opposite of 1 over 2? 2. No, no, no. What's opposite of 1 over 2? Negative 1 over 2. I'm sorry. Opposite of negative 1 over 2 is 1 over 2. And then reciprocal of that is 2. Okay. Does that make sense? All right. Let's do some more now.
So take a look at this. Now let's do some examples. I tell you that there are two lines, R and S. Actually, three lines, R, S, and T. Let's say that R and S are parallel and R and T are perpendicular. Do you guys remember the symbol for parallel and perpendicular? And M stands for slope, okay? So let's say we have this and I give you the slope of I give you the slope of R, which is negative half. What do you think, because slope of S has to be if they're parallel? Because we just said right here, R is parallel to S, right? Negative one half. <laughs> what about then the slope of T, if the R and T are perpendicular? It's got to be two. Does that make sense? Yeah. You guys get this? Yeah. So then do the rest. This was negative one over two. This was two. It's easy. easy. Go ahead, everybody try. <laughs> Fill in the chart. I'll wait for you. Go ahead. All right, how about... John, what can you tell me about, how do I do B, part B? Just find the linear reciprocal of 1, 6. Yeah. And the for both. Yeah, which is? Negative Yeah, both is negative 6. Would you not agree? Yeah. Easy enough? Okay, very good. How about uh, Austin, what about yes. C? Yeah, 1, 6 and negative 5. And negative 5. Okay, good. Next, uh, Eric? Negative uh, 4, 1, 4. 1, 4, of course. Good. Next, uh, Kevin? This is A, by the way. Negative 1 over A. Mm -hmm. And then negative 1 over Yeah. And here, you got to be careful. A can't be? Zero. zero. Because if A was 0, then you know you get undefined number. So be careful. A can't be 0. OK. What about next, um, Michael? Negative 4 over 3x is correct. What about this one? Yeah. And x can't be? Zero. zero. I guess you, if they're zero, then these will be vertical and horizontal line. We'll just, no. we'll just write it this way for now, OK? You know what I mean? Because yeah. if a was zero, this would be a horizontal line. The rest <laughs> is vertical. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, but we'll just leave it this way because they're saying it's some slope there. OK, next, uh, Naomi. What about g? It's kind of interesting. This one is zero, slope. What do you think slope of the line that is parallel to it? Zero and undefined. Very good. Can I write no slope? Yeah, the same thing, right? I can write no slope. On. All right, what about H? Uh, Brandon, what do I put for the H here? Undefined. Yeah, undefined for which one? Four? Both of them, right? Yeah. Huh? OK, does that make sense? Easy enough? OK, because one of the if the one of the line is horizontal, the other is perpendicular if they're perpendicular, right? I mean, the other is horizontal, vertical, right, if they're perpendicular. Easy enough? All right, let's look at our last example then. Here we go. All right, try example two. Okay, it says use slope to show that triangle ABC is a right triangle. And A is at 4, 0. B is at 0, negative 8. C is at negative 16, 0. I think it might be a good idea to kind of sketch this. It might help you. Go ahead, everybody think about this. How would you do this? How would you show that this is a right triangle using slope? Okay, go ahead. Everybody think about it. I don't think you need Pythagorean theorem. I don't think you want to do it that way. It says use the slope, guys. Think about it. All right, let's plot these points. Like I said, it'd be nice to uh, plot these and then look at where they are. Okay, somebody give me the first point. What was it? Four comma zero. Okay, there it is. Okay, what's the second point? Zero comma negative. 8. There you go. You see one down there? And then what's the other 16, one? 16, 0. Negative. Is it negative 16? Negative 16, comma, 0. As you can see, I can, let me move it up. You get three points. If you were to connect this, would you get a right triangle? Yes. yes you, how would you show that this is a right triangle using slope? All you have to do is, this was point A, B, and C. What do you need here? Josh? Find all the slopes and everything. Do we need to find slope all the slopes? Oh. Yeah, you need the slope of A, B, and what? B, C. B, C. And then if they are uh, negative, they're negative. Yeah, if they are, if you multiply their slope and it becomes negative 1, then you know they are, you get a right triangle. Does that make sense? All right, go ahead, everybody try. Finish it up. I'll wait. Okay. All right, so who's got the slope of A, B? What did you get? The slope of A, B. Nicholas? Negative 1 over 2. Isn't that right? Okay, what about slope of, whoops, that's not the right one. Is it? Uh, what about slope of, oh, oh yeah, slope of uh, BC, what's slope of BC, how about, uh, what did you guys get for BC? Yeah, so how do, you, how do I show, if I have this, whoops. how do I show that you ha that they are perpendicular, Andrew? 
Okay, I got the slope of AB equals to 2, and the slope of BC equals to negative 1 over 2. How do I know that they're perpendicular? Because if you multiply the product of the slope, and if they equal to negative 1, then it's positive. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so that's how you know. So because they're perpendicular, because if you do 2 times, negative 1 over 2, what do you get, guys? That shows you that they're perpendicular, and that's why it's a right triangle. Does that make sense? Okay, can you do something like this for your homework tonight? Yeah. All right, good.